so we can get started. Okay, well, thank you for joining us. We are so happy to have you here in the community classroom once again on a Monday evening for Let's Paint with Plaid. So um, tonight we have, a, we have a special treat because Kirsten is back in the house. And for those of you who have painted with her before, you know, it's always a lot of fun and you'll learn some great stuff. And she is uh, painting gourds on glass this evening, which admittedly is a pretty bad name for a painting. And I can say that because I named it, um, but it doesn't make it a bad <laughs> painting. It's a great painting and it's gonna be fun. And learning to paint on glass is actually a lot of fun. So we are using folk art multi-surface and you're going to learn a lot from Kirsten about that. So I'm excited to hand it over to you, Kirsten. Take it away. Thanks. Thanks, John. Oh, we've been giggling about the name, Gourds on Glass. Not so good. you guys, thanks for joining us. Um, today we are doing something a little bit different. We are painting on um, just a framed piece of glass. We're starting to see these everywhere. Michael's has different sizes, different shapes, but just a cute little farmhouse frame that is meant to be crafted on, not to insert a picture. So we wanted to do something different and do that. So with that, let me show you guys the supplies that we're using. So because we're painting on glass, we are also using a different folk art formula. Rather than using our traditional folk art, we are using folk art multi-surface, which I'm sure you guys have all used a million times. And it is just perfect for wood and terracotta and ceramics and plastic and glass. So just so many different surfaces. So the colors that we're using today is black and white, licorice and wicker white. We are using this beautiful green, which is fresh cut grass. We are using, this is a really dark burgundy, if you guys can tell, and this is berry wine. And then we are using pure orange and then two different browns, um, bark brown and coffee latte. And what I always want to say whenever we do these classes is this is the palette that I pick. This is the palette that you guys have on your supply list. But if you've got a brighter green or a dark hunter green, it will work perfectly. If you've got a different orange, maybe this berry wine, you don't want to use it all and you've got a red or a plum. Absolutely um, use whatever palette is best for you guys. Um, and kind of make it match your decor. Because what we're focusing on is the techniques, the look, and just having a beautiful project at the end. So the other thing that you guys are gonna need is these are just basic paint pens and a gold metallic. And I think I called out for maybe a medium tip. And that is usually about that size. But again, if you wanted to do the same technique with a black paint marker, a white paint, paint marker, but we are going to be using a gold. And then I called out for that craft smart or that um, basic uh, brush set. And what brushes we are going to be using today, it's a seven piece set and it's got little liners and little round brushes, but we are going to focus on these bigger brushes. I think this is a 10, this is a six, there's a 12 and then a three quarter. So just a variety of larger flat brushes is what you'll need for tonight's class. Okay, so those are our supplies. Always a paper plate, a ceramic plate, palette paper, um, paper towels, water for your brushes. And then today we're gonna need a pencil and a piece of paper. And the only thing with the paper is make sure that it fits the glass area of our surface. And if you only have maybe two um, eight and a half by 11 sheets, maybe grab a piece of tape and tape two together. Cause we just wanna have a piece of paper that can be pretty close to the size of our glass. Okay, so with that said, I think we're ready to get started. And one thing I know you guys, a lot of you join us all the time, but we always have a blow dryer on hand. And the reason we do that is because in an hour, we want to get from start to finish. And so we kind of sneak some dry time by blow drying our paint. That is a trick so we, get, so we can teach you guys tons more um, techniques and tips while we're here for just an hour. But also know that this video will be up and you can follow it um, maybe after tonight's class and not need a blow dryer if you don't happen to have one for tonight. Okay, so, so with Kirsten. that said... Yeah, oh, just sorry, before Dad, we start, um, so 
someone was asking if they can do it on Canvas. Sure, um, absolutely. So, okay, so, so the technique the only, for the painting itself will be the same, I yeah. guess? Well, the only thing that will be different, you'll be able to learn all of the techniques. You will have to kind of alter it a little bit because what we're gonna be doing, let me see, I always don't know if you're overhead or the upfront camera. What we're gonna be doing is doing one step on the front of the glass. And then the beauty of painting on glass is we are going to be doing another step on the back. So if you're working on a canvas, mm -mm -mm, I guess there's two ways you could do it is you, you'd have a hard time following us tonight because what we are gonna do is we're gonna be doing our top coats first, like our shading and our highlighting. So if you go back and watch it, what you would do is you would just reverse the steps. You would do on the canvas, what we do on the back, you would let that dry. And then you would do what we do on the front on top of your base coat. Did that make any sense at all? <laughs> Not it much, did. huh? But maybe it would be a good idea then if you just, you know, if you really want to get the, the most out of this is to watch, you know, make some notes yeah. or just enjoy the class. And then that way, go back and watch the recording once you've been able to get yourself a piece of glass um, yes. so that you can participate in that. You could even, I you would, know, if you have a picture frame that yep. you don't care that much about, go ahead and pop the glass out of it. You'll be ready That's to a, go. Yep. Great idea. And even if you just want to follow along as techniques, if you pop uh the glass out if you get it to the sink really quick before it dries you can rinse that off and put it right back in your picture frame um <laughs> but you could still participate with us um yeah. okay so what we're doing first and you can take the glass out but i am not going to because it doesn't have to be exactly the same size i am just putting this piece of scrap paper from my computer into this frame kind of pushing it down where the edges are too big, kind of creating a crease with my nail and then taking that out. And all I am gonna do is fold that and tear that so that I have a piece of paper that's pretty close. Again, you don't have to measure. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly, but pretty close to the size of the glass that you're working on. If you want to take it out of the frame and use it to make a pattern and then put it right back in, that's okay too. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just pretty close to the size of your glass. Okay, so what we are going to do first is create a pattern. And what I love to do, let me see if I can get this where you guys see both of them rather than provide a pattern, because then sometimes what happens is it becomes um, more like coloring with a coloring book and less about learning a really loose, fun technique like this and making it your own. So we are gonna draw our own pattern tonight. So here is my area that I'm working with. And what I always try to tell people is just break something down into a basic shape. So obviously the pumpkin is a larger circle, this one is a smaller circle. You can see they're kind of segmented with maybe you could say a C, a C shape. And then I'll show you some tricks for the leaves and all the different floral elements. But what we're gonna do first is knowing that pumpkin is most of this side, side of our painting is I'm just gonna really lightly sketch a basketball, let's say. So just to get that basic shape. And then what I'm gonna do is go over here for my little pumpkin and I'm not gonna have him sitting straight up. I'm gonna have him kind of sitting a little bit to the side. I'm gonna draw a smaller little circle. It's probably harder for you guys to see because my pencil is lighter, but that is just for placement. And now what I'm gonna do is go into where that base of that stem of the pumpkin is. And I'm just gonna do just the little area, almost like a spider web, where that pumpkin stem will come into the pumpkin. So then using that and that as a guide, I'm gonna create that first section of the pumpkin, a long C or an oval. 
And then I'm gonna do the same thing on there, just creating those little segments that a pumpkin has. And then right there, I'm gonna do the same, creating that edge and the same right there. And then that has basically created the base of your little stem. So I'm just gonna go in there and create that stem. A little area where the pumpkin is behind the stem, just a little half circle. So that's a really loose basic placement. And then we're gonna do the same thing for this little guy. Almost like a section of a spider web, about maybe two fingers down from the top of the oval, and then use those points on the spider web or the bat to just create those little segments on your pumpkin. And then that's the base of your stem. So I'm just gonna use that. And know that this pattern is really just a guide. We're not gonna color it exactly. It's just gonna give us a place to place all of our color. And then what's behind the stem? How's it going already, John? Any questions? I when don't know. Quiet, I think I really every, is everybody doing okay? Everyone able to keep up with that so far? Okay. Okay. Well, let's just keep going. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is you see, I just have a few little fall leaves, one on this side, two on this side. And what I think is the easiest thing for drawing a leaf like this is I'm gonna do a long line and then two smaller. So that represents the segments of each, of each leaf. So that, that, and that. A long straight line and then two lines that come out. So then that is the top of each section of that leaf. So I'm gonna start right there. Make sure my hand's not in the way. On top of that longest line in the middle. And I am just gonna sketch a very irregular edge. And then I'm gonna do the same going to the top of that. And the same going to there. Again, not perfect, but just giving you kind of the reference of how that leaf will set. I'm gonna do the same thing down here on the bottom, a long line and then two little shorter lines that come out. That kind of gives me a guide on where my leaf is gonna sit. And if you want, you could do a straight line like that to kind of guide you. And then you could go in and add that irregular pattern. But you're really just sketching. And then I'm gonna sneak over here to the other side. And even though my pumpkin is there, I'm gonna go right over it. And I'm just gonna do that long center line and then two shorter lines. And again, that just kind of gives you kind of just the basic shape of your leaf. And then I'm just gonna make a really irregular edge. just for placement. And then these cute little, um, almost like twigs with, with fall leaves and these smaller little accent flowers. All I'm gonna do is draw a line and then fill in with very random leaf patterns and then connect those with a stem. I'm gonna do the same thing over here coming out of that little leaf. And knowing that I'm not gonna color these exactly like a coloring book, but I'm just gonna use them as reference. And then this cute little, let me make sure you guys can see it. This cute little green vine here and here, the same thing. Just gonna do a really short basic line and then just sketch placement of where those little leaves will be. One little one right there. And then one with the larger fall leaves right here. I don't want them to line up exactly. I don't have a matching left to right. I don't have the same number on both sides of the stem. 
There's three on that side, two on that side. You want it to feel really organic. All of these details that you'll see that we did with the marker with the gold, that I don't want to become part of your pattern. That's gonna be the fun doodle outline that we do as our very last step. Okay, so you should have just a really loose, organic sketched pattern of all the placement of all the gourds on glass. <laughs> <laughs> the gourds and the leaves. So and let's the give leaves. people just a minute because I know people yep, are, are scrambling to catch up here just a bit. So um, definitely. if you want, I don't know if you need to go back and talk people through it or what, but it feels like, um, it feels like people just need to catch up just a Let bit. Let me see, if I hold it up, the mark or the pencil, I'm sorry, the pencil is showing up pretty good. Yeah, is no, it? we're able to see it pretty clear. Okay, yeah. okay, no good. But you right. guys can see like that is really not the most beautiful perfectly at all. But what it is, it's just a guide for where we're gonna put the color and the blending and the shading. This particular um, project that we're doing tonight is really just representing all these elements you can see that we're really a loose, almost an, an impressionistic version of leaves and vines and our pumpkins, just very loose. Okay, Kirsten, I'm gonna stop you right here because Amanda just said, if anyone else is singing Gourds on Glass to Girls <laughs> on Film by Duran Duran. Did I, did I actually say those words out loud yet? No, not yet, but okay. for this class, I, he's been singing it for hours. And it's I threatened, hysterical. Amanda, I threatened Kirsten that I was going to say it in my introduction. I was like, if anyone's old enough to remember yeah. Girls on Film, then it's going to Yes, I've been doing that for like a week now. So yeah. I'm glad I'm not the only one. And Amanda, I threatened to introduce him as Simon. <laughs> We've gourds had on glass, da, 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 gourds on glass. Oh, you can't help it. And now we'll never so stop. I love it. Oh my gosh, I love it. Amanda, she has no idea. Now you're going to be singing it <laughs> even more. I mean... I feel like we need background music playing while we paint. Just so y'all know, we, were, we have to we have to give you a second to catch up. So I might as well jabber in for just for a second. They were sitting around in here. Kirsten had painted this lovely painting and had <laughs> left it with Jesse and Emma, who also teach in here a lot. And they were trying to name it, and I walked in at the wrong moment. And they Incorrect. were like, "Hey, what would you name this painting?" I was like, "How about Gourds on Glass?" They're like. <laughs> Better than anything we can come up with. And I was like, that name is terrible, but it's stuck. So now we've got we got it and we all have Duran Duran in our brains. Yep, yep. Okay. Oh, I love it. We should probably move on to <laughs> painting at this point, but I, maybe that gave people a little extra time to catch up I with think it did. pattern. And a giggle. Okay, so everyone, any questions about the pattern and just how loose and organic, and it's really just there for placement. Any questions on that? I think we're probably good. We're probably good. Okay, so then all I am gonna do is literally place my project over my pattern. Glass on top, actually plexiglass. I've been saying glass the whole time. Plexiglass, glass, either one is perfect with my paper pattern underneath. Gourds on plexi doesn't sound, have the same Not ring to it. as good. Nor does no. girls on plexi. So let's just go <laughs> gourds on glass. <laughs> we, uh, we wanted it to be glass so you could have that song reference, John. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your pattern is under your glass, and on my palette, I am putting my pure orange, some wicker white, a little bit of this coffee latte, and we're going to start with that, and then a little bit of the bark brown. Pure orange, wicker white, Yep. coffee latte. Yep, and the bark brown. So light and dark brown, and then the orange and the white. 
And I'm going to use, we're going to do the pumpkin first. And I'm going to use that large, wait, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to use the num, the half inch flat brush. But when we're painting a big area like this, we're going to start with the pumpkins. Definitely use whichever brush you're most comfortable with. If you like a larger brush to do a larger area, that's fine. But if you want to use maybe just a medium flat brush, that's perfect too. Okay. So I'm going to use, again, the number half the half inch flat brush, no water, dry bristles. And what we're doing, you guys, is we are gonna do, we're kind of painting in kind of a backwards uh, way. We are gonna do the shading and the highlighting first. So normally we would base coat and then we would come back and add like these little elements that is where the light hits the stem or where the orange is light and dark, the shading and highlighting on there. We're gonna do that first following our pattern, and then we're gonna do our base coat at the very, very end. So starting on this pumpkin, I am gonna mix a little bit of the white with a little bit of the orange, pretty much equal parts of the two to just get a really light orange color. I don't wanna have too much paint on my brush, so I get a little bit off on a dry paper towel. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of follow the pattern that I created, just applying my first layer of color. You can see it's not completely where we're coloring it in like a coloring book. We're just applying a large stroke, kind of outlining those sections of our pumpkin. I'm gonna get that same orange and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And you can see they're not perfect lines. You can see where the paint, there's more on the brush on this stroke, more on this stroke and less on this stroke. You want that because what that will do is it'll give you all that shading, all those different values. So you're mixing a lighter orange wicker white and pure orange, not too much paint on your brush, but you're just starting to apply color to these two little pumpkins. Long, dry brush strokes. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little of the wicker white and make that color just a little bit lighter. Now, when you're mixing colors, I always try to tell people, don't, don't try to make the exact color that I'm making. Really just make a color that is perfect for you, but a little bit lighter than the shade that we just did. So a little bit of white and just a little bit lighter. And then I'm just gonna add even more texture to that pumpkin with large loose strokes not creating a pattern and going back and forth because that would create almost like a stripe and not outlining, but just really loose, almost like you're polishing that area of your pattern. You can still see the paper through that. And now I'm gonna go in there to the pure orange and get a little bit darker of a color still not the pure orange as it comes out of the bottle. And maybe on those segments of the pumpkin, just a little bit of that dark, but not a stripe, almost just like if it was a shadow. I'm gonna do it on this little guy also. I'm just mixing pure orange back into that medium color to make it a little bit darker, but still not the pure orange right out of the bottle. And just polishing. And you guys can see, working with these folk art acrylics, I love working with acrylics because it really dries so quick. So you're able to layer all of this color on top of itself because it dries and it just allows the colors to stay separate and vibrant and just beautiful. Okay, 
So we're going to do the pumpkins. We're going to let those dry. And now I'm going to get a little bit smaller brush. This is the number 10. And using that lighter of the two browns, this is the coffee latte, and then a little bit of wicker white. I'm going to mix a lighter version. Again, about equal parts of the white and the brown, the lighter of the two. Removing some of that on my paper towel so it's just not too much paint. And now I'm going to do the same thing with this th with these three fall leaves. I'm not going to outline. I'm not going to color them in completely, but I'm just going to do first the little stem or the little veins just to give me kind of a guide. And then just some really scratchy, loose strokes. Again, just kind of polishing the placement of that leaf where the edge of that would be. I'm gonna do the same thing on this little guy down here, the veins in the center, and then just a really loose brush stroke to define the edge. Same thing over here, even though he comes into my pumpkin, I'm still gonna do the veins. And then just really loosely right over the orange right there into the pumpkin, just defining the edge of that. So not going into the water, I'm gonna clean that on my paper towel and now get a little bit more of that true color right out of the bottle. So a little bit darker but still bringing it into our mixed color. So it's a little bit darker than this, but still lighter than what comes out of the bottle. And maybe I'm just gonna accent just the veins in that leaf. Maybe a few little strokes on just different sections. You're almost just, almost like dusting paint onto that area just to represent the placement of that little pattern. Okay, so now I'm gonna let that dry. Let's give people, we'll give people a minute to catch up on their leaves. Okay. I think some folks yeah. are still trying to catch up. So just going back, you had done, what did you do? The uh, coffee Pumpkins latte first. and the wicker white, yeah? Oh, well, yep, yep. before that. Oh, yeah. for the leaves. Yep, yep. We did the lighter of the two browns with a yep. little bit of wicker white. And Got you it. just kind of accented the pattern without coloring it in completely. I did the centers or the, the veins on each leaf. And then I just created a really loose border to represent the basic shape of that leaf pattern. Got it. And not getting full coverage, not covering it up completely because you still want to be able to reference your pattern and see that. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the stems of both of my pumpkins. I'm going to get a little bit of that bark brown, which is the darker one and a little bit of the wicker white and mix those together, just getting a lighter value. And then really just, I want you guys to see, this is a good spot to see it. So our stem base coat will be the dark brown, but we'll do that on the back, but you're really just adding little spots of color where the light would hit that pumpkin stem. So on just maybe the right side of this, I'm just going to brush a few little areas, maybe outline it where it meets the pumpkin. Same with this guy. I'm going to just kind of outline really loose where the orange meets the brown, and then just a few areas of color, not coloring it in completely, but just creating the highlights and the shading. Then I'm going to go into that wicker white and maybe just do a few strokes that are just a little bit lighter. Just creating a lot of texture 
with really loose brush strokes. While everyone's doing that, I'm gonna put a little bit of this beautiful rich burgundy. This is the berry wine. I'm gonna put a little bit of that on my palette. And here I'm gonna get the number six flat brush, just a little bit smaller flat brush. And I am gonna mix a little bit of wicker white, same thing that we've been doing with that berry wine. And this is the larger stems. So I'm not gonna do anything to the stem. All I'm gonna do is outline using the chisel edge, which is the flat edge of the brush, just kind of outlining each individual leaf. Oh, I didn't think about it. I try not to look too much. Okay, so see, I don't wanna color it in completely because we're gonna do our base coat on the back and you wanna get both of those beautiful colors together. So the berry wine with a little bit of white, just to make a little bit lighter value. I'm just outlining with really simple comma strokes. Each little, each little section. Can you guys see that on there? I'm gonna go down and do this one and just outlining. That one overlaps the orange. The orange is already dry again, which is the greatest thing about working with the acrylics. There's so many techniques that you can learn because it dries so quick. A little bit more of that berry wine. And this time I'm gonna put just a little bit of white and just a little bit of pumpkin or pure orange in there, just to get that really pretty, almost dirty mauve color. And that's just another color that we are gonna add. We're not gonna fill it in, but we're just gonna do almost like one individual comma stroke, just to create a really pretty highlight on each of those little leaves. I'm gonna add a little bit more white so you guys can see it better. When you're working with the Folk Art Acrylics or the Folk Art Multi-Surface, you can see how much pigment is in each color and they just blend so beautifully together. They don't get muddy and they just create such beautiful colors. but all I'm doing is just really applying color. There's no right or wrong. You just don't wanna fill it in completely and you don't want it to be just one color. Okay, so there's that. And then I am going to get, actually, you know what? I'm gonna use that same number six flat brush cleaning it in the water, but removing as much water as you can on a dry paper towel. And I'm gonna get a little bit of that fresh cut grass, that beautiful green onto my palette. And now I'm gonna do those cute little, almost like um, organic stems. And what I'm gonna do is, again, that's a guide but as you're doing that, if maybe you want more or less, change it to make it perfect. Don't color that exactly. But all I'm gonna do is using my chisel edge only, got a little bit of water on there. You don't want any water when you're working on glass. On my chisel edge only, I'm just gonna do really small strokes. You got one loose bristle. There we go. You got that out. Okay. 
just using the green right out of the bottle, staying on the chisel edge and just doing really easy, simple strokes to create those little leaves. I'm gonna do the same on this little one over here. I'm trying to hold my hand so I'm not covering up. But you can see I just stay on the chisel and I do a stroke on the top and a stroke on the bottom. Each one is shaped a little bit different, but this is just such a simple, um, loose painting that each leaf being a different, different size is exactly what you want. Can you guys see that on there? How's it going, John? Any questions? No, I don't think any questions. Again, folks, if, if it's going a little, yeah, people are, are trying to keep up. So if it's going a little fast, always keep in mind, you can watch tonight and then go back and finish your painting um, tomorrow when the video comes out. You can go at your own pace and pause, yep. which is always a great idea. Yeah. So, or if you don't have all the supplies gathered or what have you. So. It's up to you, but um, yep. you know, either okay. way. It's great. So while everyone's catching up, all I'm gonna do is I'm going back to that large flat brush. This is the half inch. And I'm just gonna get a little bit of wicker white and just brush that really just a really soft dry brush technique. Just a few areas where the sun would hit or the light would hit this pumpkin just a few areas to create a really pretty highlight. I'm gonna go and get a little bit more wicker white and do the same on this smaller pumpkin. Almost polishing him, creating a little bit of highlight on different sections. Using that same brush, still just with wicker white, I'm gonna do a little bit on these leaves, maybe focus more on one section on here, I focus more on this top section of the leaf. On this one, maybe I'll do the veins again, and then just the edges. But I'm just scrubbing or almost pouncing a little bit of white on there. Just a little highlight on this one down here. And then just a little bit on the stems of each pumpkin. But just a little bit of white. So what you guys should have is just, a, it's very light. It's way lighter than what our end uh, painting will look like, but you should have placement for sure. Representation where all of your elements are, your pumpkins, your leaves, your little vines, the green ones, and the cute little burgundy pink ones. So you should have placement for all of that. Now, if you want to, cause we are gonna lose, lose our pattern here, if you want to, using your smallest, your smallest brush, I am going to go into that darkest brown, which is the bark brown, and using just the very flat chisel edge, which is that flat section of the brush, all I'm going to do is connect my leaves. So I'm going to create a really soft stem. And the main reason I'm doing it now is just to give myself a guide. We're gonna do it on the back and we're also gonna do it with the paint marker, but I wanna give us a guide because once we flip this over, we won't use our pattern anymore. So using that chisel edge, I'm just connecting my leaves and my stems with my darkest brown. Using that chisel only. Just connecting those. And then I'm not even gonna clean that in water. I'm just gonna clean it on a paper towel and pick up a little bit of that green. And I'm gonna do the same thing using the chisel edge only. I'm gonna create a stem and just connect each little leaf to its stem. And same on this one up here. So now everything is connected. So we really have the basic elements of our entire painting. It's really soft. It almost looks a little bit more like a watercolor as opposed to acrylic. Okay, John, so that's shading and highlighting and getting 
all of the details that you normally do last when you're working maybe on a canvas. So does anyone have any questions before we switch and flip over and do the base coat? No, I think so. What was the last, what was that last color that you were using? I was using our darkest brown, which is that bark brown, just to create the stems. And then I got most of that bark brown out of my brush and I went into the green to do the stem for our little elements that have the green. There we go. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, this is kind of the magic of painting on glass because here you're really just coloring over your pattern, layering a bunch of different colors. And then when you flip it over, you can see all of your elements and now we are gonna add our base coat. So it's really a backwards, but a really fun way to learn because shading and highlighting is always the hard part for people. And if you're able to place color directly over your pattern, sometimes it's less intimidating for a lot of people and they really enjoy it. Okay, so I'm gonna get a clean paper towel. I'm gonna clean all of my brushes. What we are going to do is base coat last. Mm. So I am going to base coat my pumpkins with black. The reason I like to do it on black, um, it just makes the colors on the front really, really vivid and really vibrant when you have that really dark base coat. This is an area I love to tell people, if you don't want a black base coat, you could use the dark orange directly out of the bottle. You could even do white if maybe your color scheme is really soft and you want it to stay a really soft pastel look. But I am gonna base coat just my two pumpkins with black. So I'm gonna get black on my palette. And I am going to use my shading and highlighting as a guide. So I am gonna outline a little bit. I don't wanna go beyond the orange or beyond the colors too much for the round shape of my pumpkin, but I just want to apply that black. And you can see how just one coat is gonna be all that we need. And just a really loose, solid area of color. And I am going to leave just that top of the stem plain because I'm going to base coat that with the brown. So onto my bigger pumpkin. I'm definitely going to outline them, but I'm not going to go beyond where I've already done the shading and the highlighting. I'm going to kind of outline his stem very loose. If, he, if it gets a little bit, as the base coat for that, that's okay. But I am also gonna do my large pumpkin in the brown. And then I'm just kind of loosely see where that leaf is, cause I don't wanna base coat him in black, but just loosely represent where that leaf is on the front. You just get such a beautiful contrast when your background is a real dark color. And this is the back of our project. So of course your base coat, you want it to be solid, but it doesn't have to be perfect at all. There's no need to go in there and apply a second coat. All right, then I'm gonna get that, my smaller. That uh, folk art multi-surface, the way it clings to the glass like that is amazing. I mean, that just went on, it's like you were I mean, it almost looked it's like amazing. it was digital. Like it was just the way, you know, that coverage was so good. <laughs> it is so, it's such a great formula. And really painting on glass or this plexiglass is really my favorite application for the folk art multi-surface. It works on everything, but on glass, it's just perfect. So now I've got my smaller brush. This is my number 10 flat washed and dry of, as much water as you can get out of it on a paper towel. And now I'm going into that darkest brown, which is the bark brown. And I am gonna base coat the little area where I painted my pumpkin stem. If it gets a little bit into the black, 
that actually is okay because that will just create another shadow, another element of color. So I've created my stem and I'm gonna do the same thing on this little pumpkin. Again, letting it go into the black, that's okay. But just base coating that little stem. I'm gonna clean that brush, remove as much water as I can. This is that bark brown. I need a little bit more on my plate. So our darker brown, and I'm gonna base coat my little fall leaves. Now here, we've got a really loose, irregular edge. So I'm gonna do the same thing with my base coat. I'm just gonna have a really loose, irregular edge for these beautiful fall leaves. And then I'm gonna fill that in. And again, the coverage is so good using the Folk Art Multi-Surface. There's no need to go back in there and do a second coat because all we're doing is giving all the shading and highlighting that we did first, a dark base coat. And I'm gonna go over here and do the same thing over here, kind of outline and define where I had added the color on the front. Same thing where it touches the black. Don't worry about those two colors mixing a little bit because that's just gonna add that much more rich dimension in color when we flip this over but just a really good base coat. Not too thick, but just full coverage on all of it. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with our little fall stems. This is my number six flat brush, and I'm gonna use that berry wine, that beautiful burgundy directly out of the bottle. And I'm just gonna, using my chisel edge, I'm gonna outline, but then fill in the base coat of each little leaf. So outline and then fill in. Just getting a really solid, pretty base coat. On all of those. And don't worry about being exact and matching up what you did on the front of the glass with what you did on the back. Because a painting like this, you really don't want those lines to match up exactly because it's just got such a loose organic feel. So your, the front, your shading and highlighting becomes your pattern for the back, which really makes it so easy to focus on the color and the blending and the mixing of colors rather than how to follow your pattern. But I'm just base coating. That is such a beautiful color. So just make sure, get a little bit more if you need it, but just that you have a really good solid base coat on all of those. Okay, I'm gonna dry that on a paper towel and get all that paint off. And I'm gonna go just a little bit into the licorice, the black and add that to the berry wine, a really, really, really dark burgundy. And I'm just gonna go over that same stem that we created with the light brown on the front, staying on my chisel edge. I'm just gonna add another, actually another stem right over that brown one that we already did, just to darken it up and connect it to each leaf a little bit better. Same thing over here, just using the chisel edge, that berry wine, 
mixed with a little bit of black and just making a darker stem and connecting it to the branch. If you guys wanna do a second layer on the green, even though we're only using one color of green, it's still being front and back of the glass will give you a little bit of dimension. So I'm gonna go into that same green that we've been using, same number six flat brush. And I'm just gonna do the same thing that we did to the, in the front to the back, same color. but it'll give it just enough dimension. Going directly over it, not adding any paint, not doing anything different. And then the stem using the chisel edge only. And then just making sure each little leaf is connected to the stem. Okay. So this is always the exciting and the scary part. Now we are going to flip it over. And you know, something neat about, I didn't even mention this. I keep it in the frame because the neat thing about that is both sides, it's not touching a surface. So it's protected from smearing or smudging because it's not touching your work surface when you flip it over. And when we flip it over again, it's not touching your work surface again. Wow, that looks so different. I know, it's so much fun. So now what we're going to do, you kind of get a feeling of where you want more color. Like you can see how beautiful the red is, the dark underneath with the pink on top. So I noticed that I want my pumpkins a little bit more orange. So all I'm going to do is using that same flat brush, I'm going to pick up some of that orange right out of the bottle. And I'm just going to darken up just a few areas. Like, I think my stem is perfect. I'm not going to mess with that. My leaves, I love. These little burgundy berries, I just love. Yeah, those pumpkin, are amazing. The edges yeah, of just, the uh, burgundy is so good. It's just so fun to see what you get when you layer the front and the back. So all I'm going to do is add a little bit of orange directly over all of my shading and highlighting. So the black is gonna give you a value. All of the shading that you've done with the white and the mixed orange is gonna give you a value. And then adding this orange right out of the bottle on top is just gonna brighten your pumpkins. Yeah, it's very organic look to it. And then what I'm gonna do on this little guy on the bottom is I'm gonna mix just the littlest bit of that bark brown, just a little, you can always add more. Mix that into that pure orange. I'm gonna get a little bit more of that pure orange onto my palette. Now don't add too much here because what we definitely wanna do when we're using our paint marker as our last step is we have to work on dry, on a dry project. So I'm just adding a little bit, again, just polishing it, not outlining it, not being exact, but just polishing our pumpkins with a little bit of that pure orange to brighten them up. But you still get all of that value from working on both sides of the glass. You've got your base coat on the back, and then you've got all of your shading and highlighting on the front. Okay, so now what we're going to do, everything should be dry. Actually, everything is dry, except for the orange. I'm going to hit that really quick with the hairdryer while everybody catches up. You can see how quickly that dries and it's just so beautiful. This is something that you could be done and you wouldn't have to do the paint marker at all. The paint marker is just such a fun way to doodle and add just a little bit more dimension and detail to a project and especially working on glass. So this is a gold metallic. I think it's a medium tip. I just wanna make sure that, let's make sure 
sure that it's coming out good. Shake it up really good. There we go. And then what I love about using a paint marker, there we go, that's perfect, is I want you not to use it to outline, not to be exact, but just to accent, shade, doodle, add a few little elements, maybe a curly cue. So really just have fun with this step. So on this green vine, I'm not gonna outline each leaf. I'm gonna represent the stem. And then I'm definitely gonna represent the little vein that goes in the center of each. And then I'm maybe just gonna outline, make sure you guys can see that, just a few of them and not following exactly, but really loose, really artistic. Just make sure you guys can see that. It's hard to see. Can you guys see that? Oh, there you go. See oh, yeah. how it there just really just adds a really soft, almost artistic element because you're not outlining it exactly. Let's see if you guys can see it perfect on here. Same thing. I'm gonna represent the stem, not exactly, because you can still see little bits of color coming through. Definitely the center of each little leaf where it connects. And then I'm just gonna loosely outline. Can you guys see where it's just really, oh, here we go again, it's hard to see. Let's see if I put my hand under there. Yeah, If it there touches you go. the light, yeah. So you're just really doodling and having fun with it. And I think I said earlier, the paint marker would be fun to do in black, in white. You could even do a different color for each section. You could do black on some, white on some. And on this leaf, same thing. I'm gonna do a really loose outline just to represent. I'm gonna do the centers of each section, but you're almost scribbling. And then a little bit more detail in each little section of that leaf. Oh, let's see. Oh yeah, right there. See how perfect you can see that when the light catches it. But you're really just um, doodling is really the best word. Just adding details with the marker on top of all of that color that you've already, already applied that you don't want to outline. We've done everything so organic from our shading and our highlighting that you don't want to go in now and outline perfectly because you want the whole painting to feel like the same loose organic feel. Same thing over here. I'm going to represent my stem. But just not exact. One thing that's really fun is I think you guys can see it on here. So there's a little area, almost like creating a base of what those little pumpkins are sitting on. So you're really just sketching and doodling a little area, a little base under each of your boards, just to represent the area that they would be sitting. I'm gonna do the same thing over here on my leaf. I'm gonna do the veins, a really loose outline, maybe a little bit more detail. You could do maybe some little um, curly cues, some vines that would come out of your pumpkin. Accenting it however you like it to finish up the look of this really organic fall scene. Go back in and do your pumpkins. You can always reference your pattern. We have those cute little sections on our pumpkin. I should say our gourds mm. on glass. But pumpkins you can go on back plexi. On plexi, not as good. But you can go in with your paint marker and just add just enough detail to really change the whole look of your painting. And the gold is so subtle and so metallic that it's just a really nice way to add some details. Let's see if you guys can see that. Oh yeah, 
I mm. almost have to catch the light for the metallic to show. But see how it's not exact. You're not outlining, but you're really just creating another layer of detail by using the paint marker. Okay, so that is our gourds on glass for this Monday. So you guys, thanks for joining us. I wanna show you guys what next Monday's class is. It is super cute and we're keeping with the Halloween, the fall trend and Jessie will be back and she is painting this beautiful, and I don't know the name, um, this beautiful pumpkin wearing a cute little witch's hat. And let's see if, oh yeah, you guys can totally see it. She is going to introduce you guys or show you guys using um, our color shift, which you guys can see when I move that. Look how beautiful that finish is. So that's another um, specialty formula in the folk art line, but just a great way to create some really beautiful fall Halloween projects. So this is, this is Monday, same time, same place. Jesse's teaching it. Mm -hmm. Please hashtag your projects, share them on Make It With Michaels and Plaid Crafts. We love seeing all of your projects. And thanks yes. for joining us. Anyone thanks, have any questions, John? Oh, I think nope. we're good. Okay. All right, thanks everybody. Bye.